I'm standing up for my property rights. So you can find me, you can put me in jail, but I still will not give up my property rights. I will not comply and sign, check your box. You will not get a year's access to my property. It'll have to be forced 100%. You will have to violate my rights to get it. I am not giving them to you. When I was just a kid, I used to always hear people talk about how things were when they were just a kid. I didn't want to hear it. So I apologize if I'm going to bring some things up that you don't want to hear, but it's very important. When I was a kid, we didn't have the age of information. We didn't have these cell phones and we didn't have the internet and these iPads and where we could just look up whatever we wanted to. We had to read books. We had to make phone calls. We had to ask our teachers. We had to figure out ways to find out information. As human beings, we know how to use the information to watch sports, watch some of the things that we like to do that we enjoy. Um, some people like learning how to cook. Some people sit and watch pornography all day. I don't know. But what us as human beings, we have to keep adjusting to the changes, adapting to the new things that are happening. And we have to learn how to use technology for the betterment of the human race. And little by little, I believe that we're catching up. The reason I'm bringing this up is because this guy's channel, North Country Off Grid, reminds me a little bit of what it was like when I was a kid. We didn't have all these things. I went outside to play with sticks, rocks, throwing rocks, and using my knife to cut sticks and build things and make things and just have fun. And you don't see that today in this day and age, right? There's a lot of things from this channel that you guys are going to learn. North Country Off Grid. I'm totally blown away by this guy. I've been wanting to do this video for a minute. I just wanted to do it right. Um, it's st I still find it difficult for me to present it to you. So I'm just going to put some clips from his videos and his channel. And I'm going to put the links of his channel in the description. Please go subscribe to this guy. He has a lot to teach us all. Thank you guys. I've always grown up out in the woods. Uh, ever since I was little, as far as I could remember, my old man was taking me hunting, going camping with the family. Uh, I grew up out here. So it's nice to get out, go for a walk, and enjoy everything. But I do it less, it seems, since we, uh, since we moved off grid and started homesteading, since we're kind of living in the woods. You know, the woods were always a break away from the mundane. You know, from your normal life, it was always getting out and getting away from everything. Freedom, you know, they're getting away from their job, getting away from the bills, getting away from all of the constraints of society and getting out where it's still free. No one can bother you, not really. But you're out experiencing the pinnacle of freedom, basically. You know, you get to walk in thousands and thousands of acres of wood. You can get lost for miles and miles to where you won't see anyone for hours, days, weeks at a time. Seems like that freedom is being chipped away at more and more. Um, luckily in this state, state of Idaho, you're not required to get permits uh, to go and enter into the woods. In certain states, uh, they do require you to buy a permit uh, to enter into the woods. These are public lands. We the people lands, uh, and the government applies permits to them, you know, in some places, and it's just to generate revenue and so that they can make more money. And unfortunately, we the people allow that kind of stuff. And I totally agree with North Country Off Grid with what he's saying, and we have allowed it. I have seen this in so many areas of government. We have allowed our government these installations to corrupt themselves from the inside we give them so much power we don't hold them accountable it is our duty as americans to hold them accountable and that's why i am highlighting this channel we have a lot to learn from this channel pay very close attention here we go folks can i put you on hold for a moment just make sure thank you how are you good what do you need oh and the chad's here and 
Yeah, I'd like to get a copy of the uh, report that was filed, the complaint on my property. Are you asking me? Oh, okay. Okay. Let me, uh, we usually do not, we don't give out copies of those until the case is closed. Yeah. yeah because it's a, it's an investigation in process. Mm -hmm. So, so you're not, you're not going to, or you are? I'm not going to, so I'd be happy to sit down and talk with you about it. Okay. Talk to me about what? About the violation. The alleged violation? Yeah, correct. And see what we can do to help resolve it. Um, what I would like to find out is why why it is you guys are using real estate websites to go ahead. sorry let's go let's go back here to a conference sure and sit down and So I'd like to know why why it is you guys are using. Re I'm going to stand. I'd like to know why you guys are uh, uh, using real estate websites to try and police permitting issues versus waiting for a neighbor to complain and then going after it. And then why is it that Dan McDonald is under the impression that you guys are not using real estate websites to find permitting violations? So. We, we find out about violations all different types of ways. But I'm asking so specifically about why it is you... I don't understand... Why it is you guys are getting onto Realtor.com to find people's properties that are listed to then find permitting violations. I don't know that we do it. What is the problem with that? What is the problem with looking at a public domain, a public website... So what what we, is the problem of policing for permits? You're, you're, you're permitting for, for profit right. is what we you're do doing. You're, you're seeking it out to make sure that you guys are collecting some sort of revenue or that, or that the permitting, planning and zoning is bringing in revenue when you're seeking it out. If your guys' job is to go after um, your setbacks and a neighbor has not complained about a setback, why is it any of your business to interject into a situation that hasn't developed? So, Chad, our, our role in the county is to enforce the county codes. We have county codes in place. Our role is to enforce those codes. And so uh, we use all different types of means to identify where those violations are. And, to and you see nothing like, wrong with, well, by any means necessary. You don't think there's anything wrong with that because you know where I live. You know that I'm on 20 acres that you guys can't see into. And you guys use GPS or satellite to look into my property. You don't think there's anything wrong with that being your last resort and that's what you're choosing to do? No neighbor told on me. None of my neighbors complained because I have no neighbors. Right, you don't. So, yeah. so any setback issues are not affecting anyone. Did you, did you, when you bought property in Bonner County, did you know that you needed a permit in order to build? Do you have... Well, that was the question. Did you know... I'm not here to answer your questions. You're here to answer my questions, okay? You work for the public. I do not work for you. You answer to us. There are people who have an just, issue with... I, I know. I'm there are people that have an issue with the way that you choose to run planning and zoning, the way that you choose to try and police for profit. It's not acceptable. People don't like it because we don't agree with it because you sit here and say, what's wrong with us doing that? What's wrong with going after your neighbors to collect, to collect permitting? Chad, let's go back to my original question. I'm not going to answer your questions. I'm not here to answer any but, of your questions. Your, your job, it. your job is to answer and serve the public, correct? Chad, is you, my job to serve you in Chad, any way? I'm not asking you to serve me. I'm, I'm asking if you knew. I would worry about answering my questions building. then. I was asking if you knew. I'm asking so you questions and you're not even answering them. If you're not going to answer my questions, I don't care to have you finish anything you have to say. You're, you're sitting here acting as though I owe you something. I owe you nothing. I owe you absolutely nothing. So for you to have your employees, when they run out of time, to sit on a computer and go search out what your neighbors are doing, do you have anything invested in this community or you just collect a paycheck? Of course I live in this community. No, do you have anything invested in this community? Do you do anything with your community other than collect a paycheck? 
You, you don't do anything, do you? You don't know anything about I'm me. asking you right now and you're not answering you're me. You're right, because I'm not going to answer your question. Why not? Being transparent enough to the people that you operate or you answer well, to don't even know? There. How am I making an assumption? Because I haven't had the chance to talk with Dan and understand what he knows. I could prove it to know. you. I understand. I could absolutely prove it to I you. I get it. I, I don't know. What to, I'm not making an assumption. I'm telling you it's, it's verifiable proof. He made a public statement saying that you guys do not use realtor websites at all. Zero real estate websites at all to find permitting violations, yet you are doing it. That That is an issue. You don't see that as an issue? I don't. I mean, I understand that your paycheck is important to you. Chad, don't. don't. But I would think that the way that you operate in this community should matter as well. It does. That's why we continue to, to who? Make changes to the ordinances. I'm coming to you to and I'm telling you I have an issue and I'm, and I'm telling you that if the people have so an issue, will you change it? And you told me no, if the commissioners say it, then you'll do it. Right. Let me let me meet with them and talk with them about it and see what their challenges are. I, I think the issue is that because you don't see a problem in it, that you morally don't have issues with going after neighbors and then anonymously reporting okay. it. Do you understand that if you're pitting if you're pitting neighbors to do you understand that do you understand that if you are getting neighbors against each other you are not making a better community so when you say when you say hey uh, your neighbor turns you in your your compliance officers specifically say your neighbor turned you in it was a neighbor that turned you in they're they're lying not always are you okay if they've done it one time they're lying about it period. You're lying about it. If you're lying about it, you're lying to the public. Who do you think should be held responsible? The head of the department? I'm assuming you know that Lee lies to people about this stuff, correct? I don't know that. How do you not know it? He, he's underneath you. You're supposed to be in charge of the department, so you're claiming ignorance? So are you surprised by me telling you this? Because you don't seem surprised. Chad. We find out violations in lots of different ways. Let's talk about we, this one specifically then. We investigate. Listen, you're not going to sidestep me. Ways. Okay, you're not going to sidestep what I'm saying. I suggest you answer it straight up or tell me you're done answering questions. I, I'm telling you that I Lee, you what I'm going Lee, to do. Lee is submitting anonymous reports, okay, saying it's a neighbor. He's lying to the community. He works for the community. He answers to the community. Do you feel like that's someone that you should employ? Yes. You do. I need to someone that's lying to the community. Some, let me research this stuff a little bit further before you make assumptions. I'm not making assumptions. Let me, let me I'm telling you, you guys have been caught. It's been recorded. It's not caught, dude. How's it not caught? Because 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 you guys are operating in a certain true. way that the public the, the public has not operate. been aware of, and There's now they're nothing being nothing wrong with the way that we operate. According to you. As as I've just as I've just said to you, I'm not here by myself under just I my opinion. I know this not. is a public opinion shared by hundreds of people in this yeah. area and thousands of people throughout the country. Yeah. You're well aware of it. You know I what know. I'm talking about. Yep, I do. So why are you digging your heels in and saying we're good to go when it's when it's pretty simple? You just say, you what, know what? what Let's change our policies. I'm happy to change. Let my me tell policies. you. Let me tell you what I would I'm like. Happy to okay. Change it. I'm already working. Let on me it. tell you what I would like then, as a community. The issue is, if my neighbor has a problem with me, that's when you guys should step in. When my neighbor says, hey, he built over his, his, his uh, setback, here's the proof. Guys, here's the proof. Then you come out. Then we all talk. Because I did something wrong at that point. Okay? When you try to prevent crimes or prevent things before they take place and interject, you're not serving your community. You're serving yourselves. If you waited for a neighbor to complain, then it's an issue. That's where you guys step in. That is your job. Going out and looking for it just causes you guys a huge headache. Yeah. It's a huge headache. It's a waste of tax, tax I don't money. think that's what the code says. I think the code says that anybody, including the department, can turn in a violation. And so maybe that needs to be revisited. Uh, what I'm asking, what I'm asking you though, is like, why can't Lee just be content with why his job? Why and can't? when he's called out to go and find an issue, he finds an issue. So Chad, the, the police do know, the same thing. The rest of the services, do, like fire truck doesn't go out looking for fires. They wait for it. And then they go serve the people. The police doesn't go out kicking doors looking for violations. You, they saying, wait for them to come. And then they go out and serve the people. You yeah. guys, this looks like you are just trying to create more and more work to justify more and more jobs, which is a tax burden on the people. Yeah, I get do you have kids in this community? I do. I have a kid that's under a year. 
I would love for him to be able to live in Idaho. This is where we're from. This is where we're from. So to see our government taxing us out, to see all the regulations getting put in place, we the more and more regulations, do you think he's going to be able to come into this community? Regulations than most of the you guys tried to create more regulations on your new proposal of the RVs. You took, you took 120 days, and now you turned it into must have a pad, must have water and power hookups. So what we're doing is we're changing it to be, per, if, it, if it's going to be a permanent location, then what we're actually doing is increasing the number of living spaces that are allowed on a piece of property. So let me ask, so let me ask you. Determine how much, um, how many living spaces we're allowed to have on our property? Density. Like the, 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 the issue is, is for one, you're, you're trying to do it in a blanket manner. You're trying to say, cause you know, we live out on acres yep. versus people who don't. So when you say, okay, you guys can't, put this in in city limits or whatever it's understandable that someone wouldn't want five trailers on their property right but if i've got 100 acres how is it any of your business and why do we try to right. do it in one big blanket one size fits all that's why we're working on these sub area committees so that's why but why are we going after community and neighbors and trying to put them in a jail cell and trying to take their money instead of working with it i'm not i i'm getting letters left and right Chad, and I'm I, telling you, it's escalating. It, it, it's escalating because we haven't had a conversation about it. And if we could, you and I could have a conversation about it, I think we could resolve it. But you've talked to everybody else, but you haven't talked to me. I haven't talked to everyone else. I haven't talked to our commissioners. Right. I went straight to people, neighbors, and friends because that's who you guys represent the neighbors and when i went to my neighbors and i talked to them and they took issue with it too and it was a neighbor who brought this issue to me and had me bring it out to light i i didn't even i didn't even talk to anyone about my issue publicly it was adrian's issue of them coming out there and then lee comes out there and lies through the entire time and she finds out afterwards that he was lying completely and you guys come out to look at some pipe that happens to be state regulations and not even your guys's jurisdiction and somehow she's still out 85 bucks for an inspection? Do you, do you see the issue with that? It looks a lot like extortion. No one gave her her money back. And she wasn't in violation. She was. Well, what was she, she in violation she, of? She was, she put up that building with it. With she was allegedly inside. in violation. You guys did not find a violation, correct? She removed it all. She removed the plumbing. So you didn't find a she, violation. She, no, she told me that she removed the plumbing after she got noticed that it was a violation. That's what she, she told me. How did you know that she had a violation? Because they went on realtor.com and looked at her, her stuff. So we research properties in all different ways. I mean, we're going to use all the Researching mean what? Going after? No, no researching. Seeing if it... Seeing if the complaint is true. The, but the issue, but it wasn't a complaint. Was no That's complaint. the thing is, she lives so remote that a neighbor didn't complain. It's not a complaint. It's you guys policing for profit. That's what you're doing. The issue is, is it's not a problem. It has nothing to do with profit. It has to do with the process. There's a process in all of this stuff, and you follow the process, and you're fine. And the process is that there's a complaint. Is there a Who process in this country about privacy? people. There is there, there isn't a process. There's, what is what is your a, name? It's a right. I'm Jeff Conley. Chad. I'm Florida County Commissioner. My issue is that there's federal process in this country where we're allowed to be secure in our property. So when we use drones, when we use satellites to look into someone's property because you guys can't physically see into the property, you don't see a problem with that? And this is more of just a moral issue on top of rights. If you guys are saying, we just don't see an issue with being able to spy on your property, so I then I feel like these leaders are the wrong leaders. You're confusing a lot of federal and state. And you guys, and you, you can't make law that, that, dic or that contradicts federal law. That's correct. So well, let's just strip it back to the federal law. We get state pri private property. We get private property rights. Those aren't private property rights that are conditional on whether or not you guys want to look into it or not. Private property rights are private property rights. If you can't see in my property, you stay out of my property. Until a neighbor says, hey, there's a violation, allows you onto his property to take a picture of that violation. So do you feel like when you moved to Bonner County, and I don't know when that was, but um, the you know, you have some responsibility to follow the rules of Bonner County because, I mean, Bonner County, we're, are we talking codes or laws? Because I absolutely agree with the laws. 
However, I never once negotiated my rights away to any of you guys. Well, nobody said you did, but... It, well, any, then why any, would I, well, then why would I come in and adhere to a law or a rule or a code that violates my rights? Anybody, anybody in the state of Idaho would tell you that there's a certain amount of rules that have been made by planning departments and, and there's code and there's all this other right. stuff. And some of it's state, some of it's even federal that we pass through to try to regulate what's going on on the land. Whether it's wetlands what, or... What do you mean regulate on the land? We're talking private land versus wetlands, which trust is a federal dude. issue most hey, of the time. Trust me, but there's we, we, the three commissioners, are very much into private property rights. Okay, but if, if you much. guys are, then you should be agreeing with everything that I'm saying well, because do I'm doing I'm do doing nothing but sticking up for private but, property but rights. Again, let's back up to what I started to say before you interrupted me, which is that when you moved here, you must have realized did you research the rules that were in place? What, when you moved, you say rules, that's your and you're saying you're saying codes, right? And what well, I'm no, what I'm all, telling all, you, all rules. What I'm, I'm not going to okay. I'm listen. Not gonna, take it down to just code or just planning and zoning or anything else or our ordinances. That's your responsibility. You chose to move here. I was born in America, afforded rights that the state cannot violate. I agree with that. Do you understand that concept? No, I don't think we are. I know we are actually. Really? Okay. So then what is the issue on my private property that it's affecting you so much? Like I say, when you came to here and when you... You're, you're just beating around it. I'm not, I'm not in here to do a bunch of dancing with you guys. Not one bit. He wanted to answer my questions and talk to me. That's what I'm here to do. You don't seem to be part of the process right now. Chad. I'm talking so to you, this guy. you want me to leave? I can no, leave. I'm not asking you to leave, but don't turn this into a dance. I'm not in a circular conversation. Okay. Chad, so... But I, I'm, I'm basically asking...